Hi everyone and welcome to our summary on slides and photo micrographs. What we're going to be doing in this video is carrying on having a look at that first bit of module two. We're looking at three different statements from the specification in this video. First one, 2.1.1b, which is the preparation and examination of our microscope slides in light microscopy. Second one, 2.1.1c, which is the use of staining. And then finally, 2.1.1e, which is using the magnification formula. First thing then is when we're thinking about a light microscope, one of those key bits that was an advantage from our previous video looking at the types of microscope was we can look at living specimens. So things like our amoebas, paramecium, etc. they're single cellular. And therefore, when we view them under a light microscope, we can literally look at the whole organism doing its thing. Now, because we're looking at a living specimen, we need to be careful how we do this. You don't just want to throw a whole load of stains on it and hope for the best because some of them may well kill or affect that organism. So usually if we want to look at a living specimen, what we're going to do is use that diaphragm underneath the stage there to just reduce the illumination. So the diaphragm basically adjusts the amount of light that's passing through and therefore you can actually get quite a clear image of the specimen just by adjusting the amount of light passing through it. We also have the option of staining different things. So sometimes we will want to use a stain in order to make things a bit clearer for us. Now, when we're talking about a stain, this is just a coloured chemical that's going to bind to a molecule in or on a specimen. And one you should have used lower down the school would have been methylene blue. So if you took some slides and of your cheek cells, you'd have added some methylene blue to be able to see those features more clearly. At A level, we need to understand the phrase differential staining. Now, when we're talking about differential staining, we're talking about stains that bind to these specific cell structures. And what they're going to then do is stain each of these structures differently so that we can then easily identify that range of structures in that single preparation. So what do I mean? Let's give you some examples here to hopefully make that a bit clearer. We've got four different examples here of stains that we can use in our differential staining. We've got this one called acetic orsine. Now that binds the DNA. And once we've actually added this stain to it, then chromosomes are going to appear dark red when you look under the light microscope at it. If we use a stain called eosin, that will stain our cytoplasm so that we can actually see the detail there. If we use sudan red, that will stain lipids. And then one that you're probably more familiar with, iodine. Now, the iodine solution that you use, the iodine within there is going to stain two key parts of our plant cells differently. We'll stain the cellulose, which is obviously part of our cell walls, yellow, and it will then stain any starch granules that we find in our plant cell, this blue black color. So by adding the iodine to our plant cells, we're then going to be able to see those two different structures really clearly based on those different colors the iodine has stained them. We now need to understand how we can actually prepare these specimens for viewing under a microscope. What we're going to do is take each different type of specimen in turn to see how we actually treat it. First one, the liquid specimens. These are pretty straightforward. All we're going to do is we've got our little microscope slide. We just add a few little drops of the sample onto our slides using a pipette, and then we place a cover slip over the top. What we do then is we're going to press down gently on the cover slip with the goal of removing any air bubbles. Now, the reason that we're gonna press down lightly is that when you've actually put your cover slip on there, depending on how careful you are with this, you could very well end up with a whole load of air bubbles underneath. When you look at it under a light microscope, you've got these big dark black rimmed structures, circular structures. 
those are air bubbles okay and that can obviously interfere with your ability to view the sample by gently pressing down on the cover slip should force the air to the edges and therefore allow you to view without interference second type of specimen a solid specimen we cut a small sample of tissue think your onion slide preparations you'd have done all the way back at uh, key stage three we then peel away or cut a really thin layer of cells and place that onto the slide add a couple of drops of the stain cover slip on top again gently press it down to remove any air bubbles and then view it on the light microscope the next type of preparation is what we refer to as fixing specimens now this is what will have happened for any of those pre-prepared slides that you viewed in your biology lessons so when your biology teacher brings out that old wooden or plastic box of slides of weird and wonderful things they are all fixed specimens so what's happened to those we've dehydrated it first of all we've then embedded it in something like paraffin wax or a resin and then we've used a very special device called a microtome which is basically able to cut incredibly thin slices it's basically got a really really sharp blade on it that as you then move that sample across it cuts these very tiny thin slices that just float off onto the surface of a solution there you can then remove that teeny tiny thin slice place it onto your slide stain it we mount it and we then preserve it using a resin generally with our cover slip on top and you've noticed from those ones that you use the cover slip doesn't come off because it's actually fixed on there hence a fixing of a specimen it's a permanent version in theory the last bit we need to understand then is this magnification calculation so our formula magnification is image size divided by actual size this is one of those that I always try to get my students to remember using our little triangle of I am why I am it's easy to remember so I is your image size a actual size M magnification so you can use your triangle method if you don't like rearranging stuff to rearrange quite straightforward or you could obviously rearrange in a mathematical way it makes no difference it just means that you get the right formula to use for whatever the question is so if we have a look at our little question here if a nucleus has a diameter of 10 millimeters on a photo micrograph with a 1000 times magnification what is the actual diameter so in this case we're trying to work out our actual diameter so actual is going to be your image size divided by your magnification so what do we do we read our question we've got 10 millimeters first of all so we've got 10 millimeters divided by the magnification which is a thousand then we're all going to make sure that we take our calculators to all of our biology exams that gives us a value of 0.01 millimeters so one thing i will say is look out on any of these calculation questions for any units might be in the question might be where they give you that little bit there on the answer line and then there could be some units here if it's in micrometers obviously we would need to convert if we've got millimeters to convert it to micrometers all we need to do is times it by a thousand so in that case we would end up with something that was 10 micrometers look out for those though because one thing that people quite often do on calculations to do with microscopes you're using centimeters or millimeters and you don't convert to the micrometers so watch out for it to not throw away that mark as always i recommend subscribing to the channel so you can see when i next upload a video and do head on over to the a-level biology website where you can access things like the summary powerpoints questions etc they're all there to help you with your a-level studies